Everybody should know how Dubai is carrying us. We expect they are not sick. Of the correct hundred percent, we are not uh, foreigners like the locals. Dubai is Dubai. Assalamu alaikum everyone. So we are at the Dubai World Trade Center and something incredible has happened here. It has transformed into the Middle East's largest hospital. Let's look inside. Okay, so we're about to enter the Dubai Field Clinic, the largest hospital in the Middle East, 3,000 beds. And before we do that, we have to put on our personal protective equipment and put all our stuff in a bag. And then we head in. Let's go. Sanitizer. Wow. This is... Huge. Okay, so now we're in one of the rooms that are in the Dubai Field Clinic. And what is in this room? And what does a typical room look like? Doctor, please. So a typical room would have uh, a bed that's uh, similar to an ICU bed. Okay. It will have the stands for the medication, okay. the ventilator, and okay. the monitors for the patients. So you've got the electric sockets for the machines, but you've also got the sockets here for the vacuum which is the suction machine okay you've got the air you've got the oxygen and the medical gas so doctora why was this field clinic initiated what why did it start actually it is a preventive measure in every country we've heard about field hospitals being established and that is to support the existing hospitals so this wasn't needed but you guys said we're gonna do this yeah. just in case things got out of control. It's still not needed. It's still not needed. Uh, 3,000 beds are still not needed, but we're, we're keeping them ready just in case we, we would need them. Doctora, I'm only asking you this question because I know it's going to get asked. So obviously one of the, like you have to be COVID-19 positive to come to this clinic, but what we get asked is, can tourists come if they have COVID-19? Can, can expatriates come? Okay, like, is this for everyone who tests positive for COVID-19? They, they have access to this field clinic? Yes, it's for everyone. We okay. don't discriminate. But when we talk about access, it's not like you can walk through the hospital. You have to be transferred from another center or gotcha. another hospital. God bless you. This is inc like what you've been able to build in such a short time. It's yeah. incredible. It's great because we, we had a week to finish all this. Hold on, you built this whole thing in a week? Yes. So, Doctora, uh, we're in this room. There's a lot of equipment and cupboards. What happens here? Supply room would have things like medical cupboards with different medical supplies. Okay. Medical uh, refrigerators for certain, uh, I, we call them IQ intensive care unit medication, yes. where you need to access them very quickly. We've got the filters for the gases, we've got the monitors, we've got the different consumables, the masks everything that a nurse needs on the spot so she doesn't have to go looking for it it's available at every cubicle so the first and the last room is all the supplies room gotcha so something interesting this is a hospital that is dealing with sick patients in the middle of a pandemic but they still made the space the time and the resources for the well-being in the form of entertainment so what does this look like, Dr. Yeah, we've got a section that's dedicated for patient entertainment. We've got a cinema. Okay. Where every Thursday we show a Bollywood movie. And then on a Tuesday, we ask the patients if they want an English movie or any other language. Okay. They have a foosball. I never thought I'd see a robot doing the robot. When you have so many uh, COVID-19 positive patients in one area, doesn't it make it like a place for it to be able to contaminate other people if it gets out? No, it doesn't actually. And that's why we have negative pressure holes. Okay. This entire hole has negative pressure in it, meaning that if the door is open to bring in patients or to bring in supplies, the air inside the hole does not leave outside. In fact, air from outside gets sucked in. And this way, we contain the air inside the hole, so there's no contamination. Tea, food, hot like hotel, everything is there. Thanks God, it will go very really. I'm 
no word to tell me. I want a photo. I will tell you. everybody should know how Dubai is carrying us. We expect they are not sick. Of the correct hundred percent. We are not uh, foreigners like the locals. Really. Thank you. 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 So, Doctor, what do you think we've learned from this as a lesson that you want to carry forward to support and help people in the future? Being ready for the worst, being prepared and having everything done. A lot of people were saying you won't need it, the disease is just a flu, uh, it will go away in a couple of months. But when you look at all those patients that we're helping, all of those who have left the hospital cured, then it's worth all the trouble. Alhamdulillah. God bless you, Doctor. I know you're working really hard. I know you're super busy. If I want to thank you for the time to show us around, God bless you. Wishing you all the best, inshallah. Ramadan Kareem. Well, today we have seen how somewhere as incredible as a World Trade Center could be transformed into a hospital, a place that helps people, a place that prioritizes the care and the health of the citizens and the residents who call this country home. And what we have seen through this crisis through this pandemic is the way that a country and a government can show that it cares is going above and beyond. And it's not a matter of being prepared for what's happening right now, but for what might happen in the future, whether it happens or not. That is when you know that a country truly cares. Much love, God bless, and thank you so much to the heroes on the front line. Assalamu alaikum.